This is a novel one. I've not actually seen any, any others like this. It's a 20 watt LED floodlight, but with a much narrower beam angle. I think they claim a 30 degree beam angle. And it seems to have this um, sort of reflector in it. Uh, it's also got the interesting feature that it's got a completely separate aluminium heat sink on the back. And that seems to be pressed into some sort of um, ceiling gland. Not 100% sure why it's a separate piece of aluminium they've used in the back. Unless, of course, um, if they use higher wattage LEDs, they just use deeper fins, and it means they can use the same sort of case and reflector arrangement. But anyway, uh, let's uh, check the earth continuity, shall we? I got two of these. The other one has been tested, and its earth continuity was fine. This one's earth continuity is not fine. Okay. The other one was the standard beam angle. So, it comes off from this side, which is uh, different. Okay, is that it clear? Yes it is. Mm. Big seal. Screws everywhere. Okay, that's quite a nice uh, sealing arrangement. The glass seems to have fairly clean ground edges on it, so it's not got sharp shards like some of the other ones do. The reflector... That's metal. I thought that was going to be plastic. Let's take it out and take a look. It's metal. Mm, interesting. Now, the power supply is gunked in. Mains is coming in, it's going into this power supply. Is the actual metal casing of the power supply itself earth then? Because I don't actually see an earth wire. Let's um, check that. So here's the earth. No, that was wishful thinking, wasn't it? So, no real way of earthing this fitting unless you actually pull this flex in and actually make some connections inside and re-terminate live and neutral. So, no points for that because I would regard anything like a metal casing on the ballast as potentially able to come live and likewise, even though this is supposed to be low voltage to the LED, in the region of about 40 volts, that could also effectively be referenced to mains if the uh, driver circuit was faulty. But uh, I'm not sure how, how their thoughts, how they work that out. I see some interesting little metal shapes here, which I guess are probably for routing the cables. Yeah, they kind of work. Ah, interesting. But they don't use them. Well, that's interesting enough. It's a nice uh, concept, the fact that the ballast is mounted onto the heat sink and the LED is mounted onto the heat sink through the back of this. I wonder how well the waterproofing works on that though, because that whole seam around there could be a weakness, but any more weakness I suppose than the front uh, seal. So what we got here. Let's see if I can put this in the wrong way around. Oh, mm, is that a standard size? Does that go in just one way round? That seems to work better. 
Oh, that has sat down. Okay. But yeah, that's interesting. I suppose I should actually put a reflector in, but yeah, that's what that one's like inside. Let's open another one, uh, its partner, and see what it looks like. And see if there's much difference. So I'll just shove that all out of the way and bring the other one up. This one is earth and did test at 20 watts. That's quite good, and that other one's got a huge power supply, so it will be 20 watts. So I'll just... Uh, Double check, these came from Hot Sale eShop. Just been noting which suppliers are in them. I did get in touch with other suppliers about the defective lights and the ones that were, yeah, that's got earth continuity. Not excellent earth continuity, but it's got earth continuity. Uh, I did contact them, and actually they were both quite helpful, seeing that uh, they weren't aware of the issue with the incorrect ratings, and one of them seemed to be a wee bit sort of fed up of getting stuff that had earths not connected. So um, they did both offer a, a refund uh, a, and a full, uh, including return shipping, but I wasn't really bothered because, um, yeah, I can hack these things and modify them. So is this just going to be the same inside? I'd guess it probably is. But then what have they done about the earth then? Because the other one couldn't be earthed. Let's uh, have a wee cascade of screws, shall we? Oh, different. Right, this one. Let's get the reflector out of the way. Are the reflectors interchangeable? I think they should be. I think it's a standard spacing. I see the earth wire here because this is just heat shrinked. Uh, so this probably would just fit in there. Yeah, it uses the same spacings. Yeah. Interesting. Ooh, it's well glued down. So what if they connected the the earth is actually screwed onto the back heat sink and the casing as well, so that's pretty good. slicing through components in the circuit board. Interesting construction. Bit of a plasticised card to uh, keep that from piercing the um, heat shrink. A blob of solder conveniently included free with the um, driver transistor. Single-sided feedback circuit with presumably a sense resistor. That would be the sense resistor there, probably. Oh, actually, no, um, it might actually... I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, it'll be a sense resistor and then an LED to... Uh, uh, sorry, a transistor to drive the LED. So that resistor's probably limiting the current through the LED. It's quite uh, interesting, this. It seems quite well... Set up. 22 microfarad, 400 volt capacitor. It's got a fuse, which is nice, unless it blows when it's not nice. Now, is that just a surge suppressor, or is that an actual... That may actually be a thermistor to turn it off if it gets too hot or starts passing too much current. That's unusual. Then it's got a metal oxide varistor there. Which the two in conjunction means if it was over-volted, um, theoretically, 
it should, if it was passing a lot of current, it was, I wonder what it should go first. If it was a modest amount of current, this would heat up and trip if it's a PTC thermistor. So now it's got a little basic bit of suppression, I mean a capacitor. It's not super suppression. Then it's got a, a bridge rectifier um, that, that will be feeding the capacitor and then just very basic feedback circuitry. Nothing really complex there, it's just the um, the feedback opto isolator gating this, this component. Oh, I will say, actually, I've just noticed something. That uh, transistor-like thing has four pins. OK, I have to get the microscope onto that now, because it's not just an ordinary transistor. Am I going to be able to get this in? I wonder, it's kind of tight. I could do with a microscope that actually fits into uh, things better. OK, I can see some numbers. 5L 0380R And then it's underneath it says D11BY And that's about it, I think. It's got a logo which looks like a sort of 7 with a dash through it or a plus with a wee flag at the top. I'm reading it upside down, so... Um, uh, so yeah, the main number there is the um, 5L0380R. So I'm guessing that may just be a dedicated switch mode driver chip uh, designed to accept uh, feedback from an opto isolator. So that's quite... <laughs> Overall, I'd say that, apart from the lack of earth in the other one, these are probably okay. Um, I certainly, uh, when I tested this one, it, it came in at about uh, 20 watts, which was good. Yeah, neat. It looks quite robust and beefy. It looks looks like a good light. See, this is what a 20 watt power supply should look like. Note the size. Yes, not those scrawny wee things in those other lights, which makes me realise that they'd be really pushing it to fit one of these in those lights. That's probably why they just ended up sticking the 10 watt ones in instead. But yeah, pretty neat lights. I quite like their, their design.